Welcome to the French Revolution Museum. I'm your guide, Grace. Before we tour the museum, here's some background information about the French Revolution. The French Revolution was a monumental event that changed the history of France and still shows effects today in the 21st century. The French Revolution happened from 1789 to the late 1790s. In the 1700s, there were three estates. The third estate, peasants. The second estate, uh, noble slash royalty. And the third estate, the clergy. The French Revolution was caused by the Second Estate mainly because of excessive spending the royal family engaged in. This eventually led to the rise of all the peasants and they demanded an agreement be made. This led to the Tennis Court Oath. The Tennis Court Oath was the National Assembly meeting in an indoor tennis court to discuss a treaty with the Second Estate. However, this treaty wasn't sufficient enough and the peasants decided they needed to take further action. On July 14th, the National Assembly stormed the Bastille, taking all of the weapons and gunpowder there. This would later be turned into a national French holiday called Bastille Day. After this event, the Declaration of the Rights of Man occurred, which was where the National Assembly created a document stating the rights of all people in France. Nevertheless, the National Assembly continued the French Revolution and became much more aggressive with their approach. This caused the Reign of Terror to happen. Shortly before the Reign of Terror, King Louis XVI was executed. In June of 1793, the radical group, the Jacobins, took control of France and the, from the National Assembly. This 10-month period of terror resulted in the invention of the guillotine and the death of thousands under the command of Robespierre. Shortly after this 10-month period ended, the French Revolution came to a close. Although this sounds like a happy ending, it was not. A French general named Bonaparte Napoleon was instated as Emperor of France. In 1799, the first French consul was put into place. This is when the Napoleonic Empire era of France started. Now on to a few key figures from the French Revolution. One of the key leaders in the French Revolution was Maximilien Robespierre. Robespierre was a French revolutionary and often associated with the radical group, the Jacobins. Shortly before becoming secretary of the National Assembly, he led the Jacobins. While working as secretary, he often dealt with Enlightenment ideals and helped the Declaration of Rights of Man Throughout the Reign of Terror, he continued to lead the Jacobins. However, as the Reign of Terror came to a close, his power declined significantly. Robespierre and his followers were guillotined by the soldiers of the National Convention at the end of the French Revolution. Another key figure in the French Revolution was Louis XVI. King Louis XVI was the King of France when the French Revolution began. He was also one of the main causes because he was a part of the Second Estate. In 1789, Louis decided to hold a meeting with all of the estates general in order to try and raise taxes to cover the Queen's extravagant spending. This backfired, and the Third Estate declared themselves a National Assembly and forced Louis, Louis and his family to come back to Paris. While in Paris, he and his family attempted to escape, justifying him being guilty of treason. Shortly after this, he was executed by guillotine. Without Louis XVI, France wouldn't be the same country it is today even though most of the impact he had on France was negative. Moving on, now we have some real artifacts from the French Revolution. First, we have gunpowder from the Bastille. When protesters raided the Bastille, they got weapons and gunpowder. Not only was raiding the Bastille essential to the success of the French Revolution, but it was also very symbolic. At the time, the Bastille was a symbol of the monarchy. By raiding it and stealing gunpowder, the the third estate showed that they would overthrow the government. The next artifact that we have is a real baguette um, used by the peasants or the third estate. The baguette was a big symbol for the French Revolution. Many peasants had little or none to eat because of the extrava extravagant spending the royal family engaged in. Many people resorted to eating bread because it was cheap. This made it a crucial part of the revolution. Not only was it a cheap source of food, but when the third estate raided the Bastille, they also searched for grain so they could make bread. Finally, we have the first copy of the National Anthem of France. During the French Revolution, a song was written called La Marseillaise. This later became the National Anthem of France. This song is extremely symbolic because it is a battle song written for those in the French Revolution against the monarchy. This song was written by Claude Joseph Roguet de Lille because the mayor of Strasbourg requested a marching song be written for soldiers as they fought. All of these people and artifacts changed France in a variety of ways. After the French Revolution came to a close, France entered its, its Napoleonic era. Another major change was that the feudalism system wasn't used in France anymore. The feudalism system is where it's a social hierarchy ranking um, 
presents to kings and queens. And in France, they use the second, the first, and the third estate. These are two major social and cultural changes to the country. However, the re revolution didn't result in, the, in changes alone. There were also continuations. One of the continuations was that Enlightenment thinkers continued to have a prominent place in French culture and, impl and influence presence. Not only this, but Enlightenment ideals didn't change at all. Thank you so much for visiting the French Revolution Museum. We hope you enjoyed your visit.